everybody, Wayne here. In today's overview and review, we're going to be taking a look at Soviet Dawn, the Russian Civil War, 1918 to 1921, specifically the Deluxe Edition, recently published by Worthington. This game is designed by Darren Leveloff. Now, Soviet Dawn is a game that has been out for a while now. Um, I believe it was 2012 or around there, 2009 maybe, going back that far for the original version. Um, and then there was another version in c 3 i Magazine. And so now this is the third, but the big deluxe version. Um, I have not played it previously. It's my first time playing it. So I wish I could have that experience to compare between the different versions, but I'm just gonna give you my thoughts of this game, this design right now. Um, you know, is it worth playing? Is it worth getting all those things? So I'll give my honest thoughts later. Like all of my reviews, Starting off, this is the introduction. I'll do a quick overview of the game. I'm not gonna spend super long on it because I do have a tutorial playthrough you guys can watch. And then after that, I'll dive into my pros and cons and finish with my final thoughts. So let's dive into the overview. In Soviet Dawn, you are playing as the red communist forces. Um, you're opposed by the whites, basically all of the non-communist forces um, trying to topple you, trying to make sure your side doesn't win. Now, some of it is are actual armies, some of it are abstracted. If you're not familiar with States of Siege games, and there's maybe a couple of you out there that aren't, I, I feel like most of you, Solitaire War games, you probably are, but there may be some of you that aren't. Uh, maybe you're looking to get into them and this is your first game or you're newer to war gaming, um, in which case, welcome, by the way. States of Siege games, great Solitaire War games overall. Um, quick little kind of overview recap of states of siege. So you have generally you'll have a force in the center that represents you some sort of icon or area in the center. In this case, it's Moscow. And you can see you have these different tracks. They're all different colored, easy to tell apart that are headed towards you. Now, they're not necessarily all armies, right? They're forces working against you. So just because something reaches all the way and moves into Moscow doesn't mean that Moscow was invaded by an army. It just means that whatever influence that was is now strong enough that you're going to lose because of it. Um, while the game is happening, you are flipping these cards over. I'll go over the cards in a second. And you're taking your actions and the fronts here, right? The different forces are moving down these tracks. Sometimes they may move depending on if they're activated. They may not be activated. The cards may activate them. There may be special events. Now there's all kinds of things that you can influence um, your uh, roles with, influence the advancing of the, the fronts and the armies. You have things like Red Army Reorganization up here, gives you a little special abilities. Um, you have these reserve offensive chits, political decree chits. All these things are gonna come into play. The game is not overly complicated, but there's definitely a few moving parts Nothing too hard to keep track of anything like that. It all flows pretty well. Um, you have some special events, you know, the czar, right? Starting off, the czar was in captivity. Eventually he was executed. Um, and also you're gonna have a political track. So for Soviet Dawn, there's two ways to win. There is a political track, which basically you are expending actions, moving political, um, your political will, your political level up, which represents sort of the acceptance of your regime around the world. And as you move it up, you can see international pariah, leftist sympathies, allies indecisive. You reach a nine, that's victory. You're going to win the game. The other way to win, military victory. If you survive all the cards and make it through, you win. Now looking at the cards quick, there are three colors of cards here. Those represent different epochs. Um, it's going to be the, the twilight, the, oh, to put them in order here, I suppose I could do that. Um, Twilight, which is what you start with. So just these blue ones here. There's going to be the darkness, which are the gray colored ones, and then dawn, the gold colored ones. There's a certain card for each of the epochs will basically instruct you to um, insert the next group of cards. So when you start off, the draw pile here is only the blue cards. Eventually, there's going to be a certain card. You're going to go ahead and put in all the gray cards. And then eventually, finally, the gold cards. Again, because the normal game, the way it goes, um, they're randomized. You never know exactly when certain cards are going to come into play. And because of that, certain cards, when you're drawing them and you're following the instructions, may or may not apply. But then if you play another game, it may apply that time. Um, generally, what's going to happen, you're drawing a card. Very simple. 
You have some numbers and stuff on here, some information, but super easy to follow. You're gonna have your actions up here. Those are the amount of actions you can take. There's a card number. When you, some of them you have special things you wanna look up in the rule book. Um, it's gonna have the actual title. There's gonna be some flavor text here, some historical um, information. Then there's gonna be any sort of special events, headlines, um, political dissent, anything you keep track of here. And then finally, you're gonna have this box here. It's gonna tell you which fronts advance. Sometimes you're gonna have a front that actually retreats. And what you're doing when you're advancing these fronts, they have to be on the board. For an example here, this card, Finland and Southern. You can look, Finland is no longer on the board. Finland is pieces out of play, so you wouldn't even advance them. However, Southern is on the board, so they would be advanced one position. There are other things that happen as the events. So for instance, this one just has, says no restrictions. This one says, hey, it's got a couple different things happen, right? Minus one die roll modifier versus Poland and Southern. So that hurts us. However, then the little lightning bolt is political descent phase, which roll the Southern front can be removed from play this turn. So that obviously helps you. That's one less front's gonna be coming after you. Again, you have all these different cards. You're gonna be running through them. Sometimes they'll have one effect, sometimes they'll have another effect, but you never know exactly what's gonna happen. And you continue on until either you have a political victory, you make it through all the cards for a military victory, or more likely, one of the fronts is gonna get a little too close and move into Moscow, or your political level is gonna drop all the way to zero, you're gonna suffer political collapse, and you will lose the game. Hopefully that is a good enough recap overview combined with my tutorial, especially with the tutorial. If you go watch that, you should be good to go. We have a couple questions, but Rulebook's pretty extensive. It'll cover it. So I think that's it. Let's dive into my pros and cons. All right, we'll start off with my cons first. As usual, things I don't like, things I thought could have been done a little differently, a little better, in my opinion. Um, and then we'll have my pros. So first con, um, so there's this big typo on the board here. Uh, someone pointed out in my comments. I didn't notice it during the recon, my unboxing, but Red Army Reorganization. <laughs> you know, oops, needed a, need another R in there. So not a big deal, except it just seems like maybe that should have been caught pretty easily, right? Um, second, why aren't the phase icons on the cards shown in the sequence of play printed on the board? So we kind of talked about you know this during the overview, um, the different... You know, having, uh, say, the hammer and sickle here. Hammer and sickle means it's a Soviet action phase. And I have a graphic popping up so you guys can see that. The lightning bolt is the political descent phase. Um, the little newspaper is the headline phase. And then there is a flag for fronts movement phase, although that doesn't show on the card. However, when you look at the sequence of play here, it just says, like, number one, draw a card, handle events. Number two, perform enemy movement. Number three, conduct Soviet actions. Number four, resolve any political dissent. Why don't they have the actual, I know maybe it's a little hard for you guys to see on the video, but there's no logo there. So you have, you know, things that are happening here that tell you when they happen during a turn, but until you have it memorized, you know, what order things go in, they're not listed here. So you kind of have to make that mental connection. A huge deal? No. But when you're, I think when you're playing these solitaire games, you're playing them by yourself, you know, every little bit, every little mnemonic or anything that'll help you kind of remember the sequence of play and how things are carried out is really going to help you make sure you're playing the game correctly. Um, and unfortunately, that's kind of a little missed one. So again, it is a small one, but I just think it's something that would have been pretty nice and pretty easy to just have that, have those little, little icons right there on the sequence of play on the board. Um, finally, I play the game now multiple multiple times i mean it plays very quickly so i played it a bunch um the political victory is kind of easy um I, there's i think there's an optional rule um you can see you know victory at nine there it says optional at 10 so just the way the game is the way and i'm i'm not overly lucky i'm not overly good at any of these games but for whatever reason when i sit down if i start a game and i say which, and I, if you watch my tutorial playthrough, spoiler alert, I win because I go for a political victory. I found a way that I can basically get a political victory, not every time, but quite a bit. It just seems to be too easy to do. Now, conversely, the military victory is kind of hard and can be really hard, actually. So maybe that's kind of the balance, right? Is that, you know, 
You can focus on, if you really want to win, focus on political. You, you may have a good chance of winning. If you really want to play the game out and you really want to have a, a, a challenging experience, you're going to have to try for the military victory. So at least that's been my experience. Again, I, I haven't played the game hundreds of times, but I've certainly played it, I think, enough to say that a political victory is probably a little too easy. All right, those are my cons. Let's get into my pros, and I have a number of those. First off, components are fantastic. I know I say that with like every Worthington release, but I think they've earned the kudos by continuing to put out all of these deluxe versions of these games. Um, you know, the mounted board, the thick individual die cut counters, linen finish, like poker quality cards. I mean, these cards are fantastic, you know? I mean, they got that linen finish on there, great quality, like it's beautiful. So overall, fantastic components as usual from Worthington but I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, second, um, I'm not always a fan for optional rules. A lot of times I feel like they could be kind of a crutch that you know designers put in a bunch of optional rules and just sort of uh, tailor the games to how you like it and then, then it'll, maybe it'll be good if you didn't like it at first. This game, first of all, the base game, okay, um, spoiler alert, I enjoy it and I'll get into that more here with my final thoughts, but so it doesn't need optional rules. That said, the game does have a bunch of them, and it has some good ones. Um, it has options for the setup. I talked about how you can do them the random setup, the random um, uh, shuffling of the cards, or you can actually have them in order with the numbers on the cards. So you can actually play it in more of a um, historical timeline manner of when these events happened. Um, you can change the victory conditions, for instance, with the political track, right, instead of a 9, making it a 10, and you, you're not gonna be, you can see you're not going to be able to roll to get that, because the number down here means you have to roll higher than that to get the political shit to move. Um, also, and this is a kind of a big one, it includes all the expansion cards, so the original game, the OG game, had an expansion. Again, I don't have experience with it, but you know, there's a whole bunch of expansion cards. And they say expansion there, corner. So it tells you to remove them for the base game, but just adds a bunch more events, a bunch more things to do. It also makes, I believe, the military game a little harder. I haven't played with the expansion, but that's what kind of the rule book mentions, which makes sense if you have more cards you have to go through. So there's just a lot of good optional rules. And again, although sometimes I'm a little skeptical of optional rules, I think in this game, it definitely, it pays off. Uh, third... With all the historical flavor text on the cards, in the rule book, the designer notes, you're really given a great foundation of knowledge about the Russian Revolution. Now, is this replace reading a you know full book? No, of course not. But, I mean, you're looking at these cards and every one of them has this wonderful text telling you, you know, hey, the generals form a volunteer army. Well, I don't, I don't know what that means. I'm not an expert on the, you know, Russian Civil War. Well, then it says right here, the Volunteer Army was one of the initial white forces raised during the Russian Civil War. Initially formed by Generals Alexov and Kornilov in late 1917, it consisted of students, cadets, former officers, and Cossacks. Like, it just... And there's some more there, but, you know, the, the on the cards, like I said, there's information in the rule book, at different sections of the rule book, and then in the back, all the designer notes. Just fantastic seeing all that history, right? You know, I always love that. I mentioned other games too, and these, I think, solitaire games especially, and have that opportunity to educate the player. You know, you're not just playing a game, right? This is a historical simulation of, an, of a historical event that could have affected, you know, dozens, hundreds, millions, the world, right? Depending on what event we're talking about. And to learn more about it, especially if, you know, you don't necessarily know everything about everything, which... You know, I'm close, but not there yet, right, guys? So, anyway, I really like that. Uh, finally, the variety of choices in the game. Um, there's, I told you already, there's two distinct paths to victory. You have the military, getting through all the cards, and political, getting this track all the way. Already, you have, you know, a choice, basically. Two different styles of gameplay. What are you going to focus on? Are you going to give a little bit on the military and let them kind of move in a little bit more because you know you're focusing on the political track? Or do you not really care about the political track? You just need it high enough to not lose automatically. And then you're going to spend all your actions, you know, launching offensives and holding back all the different forces trying to bring you down. Um, also, there's usually multiple choices each turn. So, uh, okay, to be honest, a lot of them come down to die rolls. You know, there's some luck involved in the game. Quite a bit of luck, in fact. I mean, we're, it is a dice-based game, right? 
but the game also offers ways to mitigate the luck. There's reserve offensives, these political decrees. You can try for the Red Army reorganization, and you can go ahead and get special um, special chits that'll help you in different ways. Maybe it makes your army stronger. It gives you you know an ability to reroll a die or change a number on a die, etc. Now it's your choice. When you have your limited amount of actions, right? Two actions at turn, four actions, three actions. What are you going to do with those actions? And sometimes the choice is obvious and sometimes it's not. And it's up to you to really decide what you're going to do with them. All right. I think that does it for my pros and cons. Let's uh, look at my final thoughts and we'll wrap it up. All right. Well, I already did. I already said it. Spoiler alert. Um, I really enjoyed my time with this one. This game is staying on my shelf. Now, I do wish I had played the original version so I could comment on the differences. I can't say for sure whether upgrading this version is worth the upgrade if you already own an older version or purchasing this version, right? I can't say that for you. I, I don't have the older version. I think I did at one point, but I never got around to playing it, and I just think I traded it away. My bad, right? It happens. Um, so I can't say that for sure. Now, I can say... This one is definitely worth buying if you don't own a previous version of Soviet Dawn. Now, the core game mechanic, it's a little simplistic, and that could it's probably the main complaint levied against states of siege games, is the core mechanic is a little simple, right? Usually it's something like drawing a card, moving some forces towards you, you're making some die rolls, and that's the core of the game, right? But it would be a disservice to this game and to the many excellent states of siege games out there to say that that's all it is. And every time I see that comment, it makes my blood boil a little bit. You know, there's a lot more to these games than just flipping a card and rolling a die. And I think that if you don't put the effort into learning the game and learning the history and just enjoying the experience, you're, you're not giving yourself enough credit and you're not giving the game credit. And I think that's your loss. So, you know, even though the core game mechanic is a little simplistic, the variety of options makes for a lot of interesting gameplay. And not to mention, I mean, this board, everything here, you know, the game can basically, basically be reset in just like a couple minutes. So you can play multiple times in a row. This isn't a big hex encounter game where setup literally takes an hour or an hour and a half or something ridiculous like that. Setup in here takes, I mean, first time is probably five minutes. Once you, once you play the game half a dozen times, a dozen times... Trust me, you're going to be setting the game up in about 30 seconds. No problem. So you play, you get a, you hit a roadblock, you lose, you win, maybe. Whatever, you can reset it, you're back to playing again. Um, so, you know what? I definitely can recommend this if you like States of Siege style solitaire war games. Or if you enjoy solitaire war games that really emphasize the history in historical simulation. I feel like this is one that you'll put back on the shelf and be more knowledgeable simply for having played it. So, hope you guys enjoyed my overview and review of Soviet Dawn Deluxe Edition from Darren Leveloff and Worthington. Um, I do want to thank Worthington for providing me with this review copy to show off to y'all. And I do want to thank you guys for watching my videos, you know, giving me thumbs up, the likes, and subscribing. Um, you know, my numbers are shooting through the roof, which I really appreciate. Again, it helps me get more, helps me get more games um, to show off to you guys. And that's what I love to do, right? That's why I do this. Um, I, I enjoy showing off these games and explaining them. And I love when you guys respond to a video, even if it's an old video and saying, hey, I just picked up this game. And I just learned how to play thanks to this video. And I really appreciate it. That's awesome. That tickles me. I don't care if it's a two-year-old video and you got and someone responds to it. I always read those comments and sometimes I reply, sometimes I don't, but I always read them. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Soviet Dawn, specifically this version. And if you've played the previous ones, maybe do a little comparison and let, uh, let our viewers know, um, you know, you recommend upgrading. So until next time, guys, later.